think, you know, if you're really at the bottom line from all those guidelines, that there is no need for a larger margin, it's better. And if you want to be really, you know, a little bit wider than no tumor on it, one millimeter is more than enough. You don't need really to have those five millimeter or one centimeter margin. And I think this is the message to take home. Don't be very aggressive. It is not better to take larger margin. One more question for Dr. Quake. When you suture that ADM to the pectoralis major, frequently I see you feel it like a little ridge under the skin. Can you tell us some technical comments to avoid that ridge under the skin? It is true, you do get the ridge, and sometimes you get, we have had one patient with a suture that drifted, migrated into the skin, which obviously we weren't happy with, but the patient did not lose her implant. Um, we, we tried every which way. Um, we tried underneath the muscle, we tried on top of the muscle, and um, we settled for underneath the muscle based on the belief that it might impact on the capsular contraction. Um, and of course, the data, the jury is still out. Respect. So I think if you want to try and avoid the step in very thin patients, it does make sense to position it on top of the muscle, which is what we did with the answer. Can I agree with that? And the so-called best over pants approach tends to reduce that, that ridge, but of course it, it does disappear with time. It's just a bit stressful in the early days. One more question to Dr. Wait, I think you mentioned that if you have a body mass index more than 25, you increase the complication rate. We have a few work in certain places in the U.S. There are very few patients with body mass index uh, 25, particularly that woman's age is older and they're all like more. Can you comment on that? Well, we, we were expecting there to be a, a significant um, impact of um, radiotherapy and chemotherapy in our um, regression analysis, and we did not expect in a small series to see an effect from, from, from smoking and from PMI. But we did. And we did see an effect. And, and you know, we, we, we are in a situation with respect to implant reconstruction where we are treating unselected patients effectively. So we are doing things that we would not have done in the absence of cancer. And so we are operating on patients with a high PMI. And as you would expect, that, that has an effect on the complication. So what are we going to do about it? What are the steps to do to avoid those complications? Nothing. <laughs> and how do you explain it biologically that the fact the patient is a little bit above uh, the body mass BMI would increase their complication rate and they do not increase it uh, more significantly in other uh, technical operations? It's, it, I guess, maybe Professor Rainsby is in a better position to answer that, but I think it's obviously to do with the amount of fat that you get in the breast. The more fat you have, the more likely you are to get complications. But what I should have said, which is really unpublished yet, but we have um, just presented the data on our um, just short of 200 patients that we've operated on with the same type of ADM. And, and, and what we found was there was a significant impact of radiotherapy and chemotherapy, which is what we suspected in the answer. And the BMI effect remains. I think certainly if you look at the results of the our national mastectomy audit of, of 5,000 patients, there is a, a very distinct effect of high BMI on complication rates. And certainly, as far as flat based surgery is concerned, I think John, uh, Professor Johnny Fatigue will perhaps confirm this. I mean, the factors you look at are obesity, smoking, hypertension, diabetes, and uh, you put those together. And same advice to skin factors. One more question to Dr. Jean Yves Petit. Uh, can you comment about mobilization of the breast tissue after radiation therapy? You have a patient who had a lumpectomy, she had a defect, she had the radiation, she has a poor cosmetic result, and she presents to you. Uh, how difficult it is to mobilize the tissue, how would you recommend to handle these things? Can you repair the breast and do a mastopexy or should you do a flap at that time? Any suggestion? Okay. Certainly it is the uh, most difficult uh, situation and obviously uh, when there is a defect which is too important, it's better to try to uh, do a replacement technique to, to bring in the, in the suture 
compressed new tissue, which is well rested or blood survived. Uh, but in a lot of cases, it's possible to do a new, uh, not a new, but a, a reduction of opacity on a, a radiation uh, rest. And I think it's possible to use it, provided that we are more cautious about the vessels, the blood supply, and the way to cut the tissue. Uh, it's very important. We can see where are the, the small vessels, not to cut them when we are doing uh, the flaps, and uh, to respect as much as possible all the very thin vessels. To be very and obviously, if the patient has been radiated, and if or uh, she is obese and has a lot of fat tissue, I think the fat tissue is less well blood supplied than uh, the normal breast. So that fat tissue and radiation together will increase again the risk of the process. So be very cautious and it's case by case to evaluate if it's possible or not. Uh, I think we, I have done a lot of reduction of ST, but trying really to keep large predators and not uh, undermining under the skin too much. All the things we are doing usually to reduce a little bit the extent of the dissection. We want to conclude this session, and if, if there any further questions for the presenters, you can ask them personally. Thank you.